It is one of the best known groups in the Indian business landscape and over the years Mahindra and Mahindra has lent its name to a host of companies doing a host of businesses. From IT to holidays, from tractors to high-end SUVs and now aviation and defense equipment. But amidst all these many things that M&M does, the one that connects most with most urban Indians is this, the Scorpio. Few people realize that Mahindra and Mahindra started its journey as a steel trading company back in 1945. It went on to get the license for the famous Willys Jeep, went into utility vehicles like tractors, and today, of course, it's got a whole suite of products and a suite of businesses. Over the next half hour, we go deep into Mahindra and Mahindra's automotive division to find out how its product suite is evolving. This is one of the oldest plants of Mahindra and Mahindra in the suburbs of Mumbai and it is also the headquarters of its automotive division. The factory churns out 55,000 Bolero pickups every year. But the real action is slightly away, at the Chakan facility where the company is driving out a whole new range of its global SUVs. Even 10 years ago, few would have imagined that M&M would be so closely associated with a segment that then was but a small niche on the Indian roads. For Mahindra and Mahindra, until the late 90s, a tractors and old world Jeep company, the big turnaround happened in 2002 with the Scorpio. Pavan Goenka, the company's automotive head, was part of the journey from the beginning and he believes that the actual breakthrough came before the Scorpio. The genesis of the transformation of Mahindra actually started even before I joined the company. Uh, when uh, the board and Mr. Mahindra had taken a decision that Mahindra and Mahindra will grow independently in the automotive space and not become a subsidy or a licensee of some other product. Uh, and that's where the focus was put on, on growing in-house R&D and technical expertise. And from that, uh, slowly the R&D was built and the Scorpio emerged. So Scorpio obviously was a turning point. Um, but that was on the basis of a decision made in early 90s. Before that, you had a partnership with Ford, which didn't, uh, you know, uh, to develop uh, or, or mm, Yes, the Ford cars. partnership also, in a way, was part of the game plan, if I could, I could call that, because we had to learn at that time manufacturing, we had to learn design, we had to learn even uh, purchase. Uh, and we used each of these partnerships uh, as a way for us to learn uh, each of these uh, different functions. And uh, Ford was a very big step for us to learn manufacturing. Uh, where the paint shop that we use even today in Nasik was set up in Ford Partnership in Nasik uh, and uh, many of the manufacturing processes that we are using today uh, were set up by Ford for us in 94-95 in Nasik. And so that was a partnership for us. That but it was quite a leap of faith, wasn't it? I mean, fr fr looking back into history. We look back now and feel very good about having taken that leap of faith. Uh, it could have turned the other way. Uh, and then you and I won't be talking today, uh, but uh, certainly it worked out very well for us. It was leap of faith, yes, but at the same time, it also had a conviction built into it uh, that uh, an Indian company, if we do all the right things, we put the right focus, right emphasis and the right people in place, we can uh, match up to anyone else in the world. What was the brief given to you and how did you go about building the Scorpio? The brief was very simple. The brief simply was, here's a checkbook, write what you want to write, but make sure that we get a uh, world-class competitive vehicle in six to seven years. That was the brief that was given. Before joining M&M in 1993, Goenka worked as an engine technology specialist with General Motors in Detroit. And it's not surprising to hear Goenka explain that R&D was the key to the evolution of M&M in the SUV space. Well, first of all, uh, when I came here in 93, uh, the R&D was uh, uh, very small. In fact, at that time, we did mostly a uh, little bit of localization, uh, from LHD to RHD conversion, meeting some of the homologation requirements, and that's about it. Uh, and the first product that we launched from the new R&D uh, that we did actually was the pickup uh, that we launched, uh, which is doing very well now. And then later on, we launched Bolero, which was the second product, which is one of our uh, uh, the most successful product ever. And Scorpio was the third product, though the most well-known product, and something that is 
uh, seen as transformation of Mahindra. But during this process, as we are launching new products, we are also building R&D. Today, uh, when I came here, it was 50 people in R&D. Today, we have 1,500 people in R&D. And so clearly, we have uh, grown significantly, not in just terms of number, but in terms of expertise that we have. The Scorpio today has evolved into many versions, ranging all the way from 7 lakhs to 12.5 lakhs at the top end. Along with the Scorpio, there is a whole suite of other Mahindra SUVs. From the Bolero at the base to the XUV at the top. But experts like Autopower magazine editor Horma Suratji say that it was the Scorpio that acted as a game changer for the company. I think the Scorpio was uh, the biggest change for Mahindra in 50 years, uh, you know, when it was launched. Because clearly, I think what it did was, uh, as a product, it was a quantum leap ahead. That was one thing. But I think what it did for the company in terms of image, it kind of transformed the company from being a rural uh, player with a crude range of products to a much more upmarket and sophisticated brand. The, the sales were uh, were very good from, from the word go. I think the, the car was priced very competitively, the Scorpio. I think it had three main things which really made it click. One was it had uh, uh, aggressive looks, it had power, it had a strong engine and it had uh, good looks. So I think these are the three factors which really kind of made it uh, click. There were definitely shortcomings, the handling of the earlier Scorpios and even still today is really not uh, great. Uh, it was cramped in certain areas. So it wasn't a perfect vehicle but I think what, what Mahindra has shown and what a lot of people have shown is that the formula for success doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a perfect vehicle. You have to really hit the sweet spot. And that's what the Scorpio did. The Scorpio made Mahindra and Mahindra a serious player in the Indian passenger car market, the category under which SUVs are also slotted. Since that, followed by the Scorpio in 2002, M&M has been able to leverage this clout in other areas with varying degrees of success. First in cars with the Renault Logan brand and now the Verito, then the electric car, the Reva, as well as a whole suite of two-wheelers, from scooters to motorbikes. But nothing can really beat the success of the SUV. Up next, how the space is evolving.